After billionaire Jeffrey Epstein was exposed for his crimes against women, we learned that at the epicenter of it all was his island in St. James. And even though we know a lot about his island now, there are still many peculiar things about it that you probably don't. I'm Mackenzie and let's just get into it, but first make sure to subscribe if you're new here. And at number 10, the temple. One of the more peculiar things on the island is this blue striped building that looks like a temple with a golden dome on top. Some of Epstein's staffers claimed that it was a music room where he would play piano because he was a classically trained pianist. However, some theorized that it actually had an elevator in it that would take people to a hidden location. However, a contractor claimed that it was most likely not possible to have an elevator inside. But the contractor did take note of something very odd about the door to this temple. The door to the temple has a huge piece of wood in front of it as a giant lock. The contractor said about it, quote, what makes it peculiar is that if you wanted to keep people out, the bar would be placed inside the building, but the locking bar appears to be placed on the outside, as if it were intended to lock people in. I think that really just says it all. And at number nine, treasure. Apparently it was a well-known fact that Epstein was fascinated with pirates and hidden treasure on the island. He would even pay staffers if they happened to find something interesting. Apparently if his staff brought him anything of value, he would pay them between $100 to $1,000, depending on the item. His staff were known to bring him old rum bottles, plates, and other dishware that they found. And at number eight, t-shirts. One employee from Epstein's Island exposed a strange thing about Epstein's t-shirts. The employee alleged that Epstein has a storage closet filled with stacks and stacks of brand new Lacoste white polo shirts, all size medium. And you might be thinking he probably just wears the same types of shirts a lot, so he wants to have a lot of them. But that's not the case. Apparently Epstein refused to wear the shirts more than once, and after wearing them only one time, he would give them to his cleaning staff to use as rags. And if you're wondering how much these shirts cost, they're about $90 each. And at number seven, Bill Clinton. Many people have been accused of being at Epstein's island at one point or another, but one of the most frequent alleged guests was former President Bill Clinton, although he has repeatedly denied the claims. One woman named Virginia Roberts told her lawyers in 2011 that she saw Clinton with quote, two young girls on the island. She apparently asked Jeffrey what Bill Clinton was doing on the island, and Epstein replied that quote, well, he owes me a favor. After the accusations, Glazane Maxwell claimed Clinton was never on the island. However, one of Clinton's former aides claimed that Bill did visit the island in 2003. And at number six, hard to leave. We know the island was the location of all of Epstein's crimes, and he made it isolated so that nobody would be able to come to the island uninvited, and so that it would be hard for anyone to leave. The island is so isolated from the rest of society that the only way to get there is by private boat or helicopter. This isolation also made it very difficult for law enforcement authorities to monitor Epstein. According to reports, Epstein confiscated passports and stopped any communication the women would have with the outside world. One person actually attempted to escape by swimming away in the ocean, but Epstein and his security found her almost immediately. After this, it was clear she was being watched 24 seven by his guards. Halfway number five, kept authorities out. Along with his secrecy and privacy, he made sure that law enforcement was never able to step foot on the property, and he had security constantly monitoring the docks. When authorities attempted to check on Epstein, his guards would tell them that it's private property. US Virgin Islands Attorney General Denise George recounted that officers were stopped at the docks immediately when they tried to arrive. Apparently, he even hired people to install a private network for his phone calls and internet so authorities were never able to track what he was doing. And at number four, strange paintings. Something else that was discovered about Epstein was that he had some strange art in his home depicting political figures. One art piece is called The Parsing Bill. It shows former President Bill Clinton in a blue dress and high heels pointing at the viewer. The blue dress seems to be a reference to the blue dress that served as evidence in Clinton's affair with Monica Lewinsky. Apparently, the Daily Mail first snapped a picture of the painting in Epstein's home in 2012. Another one of the paintings is called War Games, and it shows former President George W. Bush sitting on the floor of the White House playing with paper airplanes and two fallen Jenga towers, referencing his manipulation of the attacks of 9-11 to justify war in Iraq. The painting makes Bush look very childish. And at number three, Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew is another one of the most famous people who is alleged to have been on the island on multiple occasions. Virginia Roberts Guffrey discussed her encounters with Prince Andrew in the series, Surviving Jeffrey Epstein. 
In the doc, Guffrey claims that Prince Andrew slept with her when she was only 17. She also claimed that he joked that she was only a few years younger than his own children. Guffrey claims that Epstein arranged encounters between her and Prince Andrew on three separate occasions. Guffrey claims that Epstein arranged encounters between her and Prince Andrew on three separate occasions, once in London, once in New York, and once on the island. Apparently Epstein forced her to fly to these places to sleep with him. Lisa Phillips also claimed that Guffrey was not the only woman whom Epstein dispatched to Prince Andrew, and there were others who just kept quiet. And at number two, people still work there. Since Epstein is now deceased, you might think that his island is deserted or something. But that's not the case, and the island is still being very heavily patrolled, even though we assume no one's actually staying there. When Inside Edition tried to go to the island and came up to the shore, they were immediately stopped by employees. Then more recently, some TikTokers decided to go to the island as well. And again, they were chased out by employees who were guarding the property. Honestly, this all just makes me wonder who actually has control over the island now that he's deceased. I'm not sure if he had any children, I don't believe that he did. Apparently now that more people are trying to sneak onto the island, security has been increased even further. But again, it's like who's actually paying for all this security? Very strange. And finally, number one, epicenter of everything. After many investigations into the island, it's now clear that the St. James Island is where all of the horrible acts took place. Fox News reported that Epstein employed people on the island responsible for obtaining girls for his clients. To get these girls to the island, he would fly them to St. Thomas and then he would ferry them over to his private island via a boat named Lady Glazane. Of course named after Glazane Maxwell. The island was created so all the horrible acts could take place and nobody would ever find out. Epstein also made it impossible for the girls to leave without his permission. So that's all for the list guys, let me know your thoughts below. But before I go, I'm going to shout out some comments from my video on Kardashian cheating. That heart diva said all the Chris cheating scandals probably could stand alone as a list. I feel like with Chris, they're really not even rumors or scandals, like they're all true. She cheated so many times on Robert Kardashian Sr. It's really, really sad, honestly. Cool Kids said they've been in so much scandals, I already lost count on how many scandals they've already been in. Yeah, um, they have and they literally will never stop being in scandals. I can pretty much guarantee that. Then someone else said, wouldn't there be pics of Larsa and Tristan together? That's very interesting. I don't think they were like officially, officially dating. Um, I think they were just kind of like maybe seeing each other and usually celebrities do keep things low key unless they like call the paparazzis on themselves. And check you later said, do none of them have a personality aside their show? Seems like only months after they post their new fling, some cheating rumors explode about the man cheating to get out of the relationship or a Kardashian cheating to get in a relationship. Yeah, it's, I don't know what it is about them having extremely bad luck with men. I think it has to do with the fact that they go after really like relatively unfamous people and then they make them so famous and then they don't want to be with the women anymore. I have no idea, but it's very, very, something very interesting and strange. All right, guys, that's all for the video today. Thank you so much for sticking around if you made all the way here. If you liked the video and want to see some more, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel below. I've been your host, Mackenzie Smith. Make sure to check us out on social media and I'll catch you all in the next one.